Well, good morning, everyone. So today I'm going to present a work related to basically the characteristic of recycled concrete aggregate. So it's good I was able, I'm able to follow Frank because he actually show us a good example of producers successfully use recycled aggregate. But I'll get into some details like, are there any concern? What do we want to know? So the work is actually done by a group uh, from uh, University of Nebraska, and that's myself and my grad former graduate, Shamiraz, and then the North Carolina uh, Tara and her student, Aridon. I think K Tara is in another meeting right now, so, but that's a work actually uh, conducted by us together. So, project was funded by ACI CRC Foundation, so, and then a graduate student over here, as well as we have a few members of the advisory committee. I know I saw some of them early, but it's a full room. I'm not going to try to find them. So really quick introduction. I think Frank gave a good background of recycle aggregate already. So we have 230 to 530 million tons of construction waste, and most of, many of them are recycle aggregate. So, and then only a very small percentage of them are used. So Frank showed you an example of some of the producers that are using that, but a lot of others have hesitation, concern of using that. And if we're using recycled concrete aggregate, lower demand of natural aggregate, lower the translation, especially you can recycle on site like pavement, and then reduce the landfill space. So that's what I'm talking about, that there are a lot of potential use of this, but the reality is that many of the state are not using that or using not using them proactively. What you see over here is that there are quite a lot of states allow people to use that in a base course, but only a few states use them in concrete. So, so what's the issue? Recycle aggregate is recycle aggregate, it's a kind of aggregate, but they are basically concerned. The main concern is that we don't know clearly what are we dealing with. So when you talk about aggregate calculation, they are, we put it together four different categories. Geometry, basically the shape, gradation, physical, uh, absorption capacity, resume water, water content that's specific for recycle aggregate, mechanic property. For mechanic property, in most cases for natural aggregate, we don't care that much about that because we kind of know that, well, aggregate is actually strong. So normal concrete, you hardly have the case that under compression aggregate break. It's more interface, but for recycle, it's, it could be very different. And then for chemical and durability, chloride content, Mamu asked that question, uh, they are definitely concerned, especially some of the northern states. That's why f I don't know whether Frank is still here. For New Mexico, they probably don't care that much. For Nebraska, we do care. We do have chloride in, in our recycle aggregate. So they are chloride content regulation, and then or other things like freezing soil and resistance. Natural aggregate, again, most cases we don't care. Recycle aggregate, we probably have some concern. So these are the four different categories. What you see in black are those what we are using. Very limited, we have gradation, we have specific gravity absorption, we have air abrasion, but many cases we don't use that, and then we, we do measure it if they are concerned, software, you can't write content. So, on the other hand, there are things that we want to know more. For example, because the crushing process is different, so the shape, texture may be different. Would that have a concern on your particle packing? Would that have a concern of your workability? And resume water content, that will have a direct impact on the property. Crushing value, as I say that, mechanic property of recycling could be actually of a main concern. And then freezing sawing, the other component is your chemical composition. That just so you know that Tara will have another presentation actually in part two of this, uh, of this section. So you'll hear she presents things related to chemical composition analyze. So I'm not gonna touch that today. So really quick, share with you what we have done. So again, we are concern of different kind of property of recycle gear. We have a comprehensive evaluation of different characteristics. Start with surface geometry. So we have a unit called Aggregate Image Measurement System, AMS. 
so basically it is a high high resolution camera can take a picture and look at the surface structure that's what you see over here as well as the geometry of your aggregate so it, it will be big you need to put in enough samples so that it's representative so the other thing is particle packing so when early on when you hear Frank was talking about that he used 0.45 so you can you can definitely use that but the 0.45 power curve is give you the optimum gradation we also did uh, the physical combination of fine and coarse aggregate together so you look at the void content that will also give you the sign of whether you have a good particle packing mm -hmm. or not so and then the main concern question is always how much of the residual motor you have meaning that because you're dealing with recycled concrete you have the old natural aggregate and you have the old motor or cement paste do we know the amount of that so there are a lot of research has been done in this at the beginning we try quite a few things look at what other people have done and then eventually we go we went to this so-called thermal shock method so really quick what do you do is you put your aggregate sample in the furnace, heat it up to certain temperature. We tried from 400 all the way to close to 1000 degree. And then immediately after I put it into cold water, and then that thermal shock, instant thermal shock will actually cause the separation of your residual water with your old natural aggregate. Then dry them up, put in a ball mill to manually separate them and then sieve it out and then you see that the natural aggregate separate from your residual motor. So, and that's another picture of before and after. So, because there are so many variables, including temperature, including that bore mill grinding time, so we actually did, a, did quite some compression of, say, follow whatever procedure, different temperature, different duration. When can we really get to the point that we can successfully remove the old motor from the uh, old aggregate. So besides, look at, I won't get into detail, say you have grinding time, temperature as well. Besides looking into the mass trend, you also look at that, use that M system, look at the surface structure, just to make sure, hey, we want to know that at what point, what temperature, you have the right process to separate your old motor with your old aggregate. So that's the residual motor content. Now get into the mechanic property that's an aggregate crushing value. This test has not been commonly used in concrete mm -hmm. aggregate. As I say, normal aggregate, you don't have a cancer. Recycle aggregate, we do. So we have to adopt a procedure that uses a natural aggregate. But at the beginning, as you can imagine, recycle is kind of weak. So basically what you have is, we, you have a steel tube, one inch thick. You want to have it thick enough, otherwise the tube will break. Then you have a head and kind of put the aggregate inside and basically crush them. So use different load and use different displacement, like how much you want to crush. So at the beginning, when we try that with a natural aggregate procedure, guess what? You get a disc of recycled aggregate plate, you cannot separate them. So apparently that's too much of load. So similar to the residual motor content, we try different loading condition, different load, what you see over here. Maximum load we apply, this thing is not showing. showing on my hand. But anyway, maximum load is you can change, and then we also use a vibrator to kind of separate them. Again, the purpose is try to minimize human impact over here. So eventually we came up with a procedure that we use for, for this purpose. The other thing is freezing sawing. So for natural aggregate, again, we don't we don't have that much voice inside. We aggregate, we do. So that again, as I mentioned, for state line and process, we do have a major concern. So what we end up use is using the a process that includes sodium chloride solution. Basically, you kind of merge your recycle aggregate into that solution and then put it in the freezer in five cycles. And then you're going to see that because of the freezing sawing, that your aggregate will, will get separated. So that's actually a Canadian standard. Apparently, they care a lot about aggregate freezing sawing damage. So that's the test procedure. Now, really quick look at the results. So for this project, we actually get aggregate from 
several different locations. Apparently, Nebraska, North Carolina, also get Aggie from Iowa and Texas. A total of 16 different Aggie, including two natural Aggie. So they all are uh, with kind of different gradation, different size, but I want to show you the result. I know this feels like very busy. So, but basically what you see over here, the ID over here, that's the state and type of the aggregate. So Nebraska, limestone, Nevada, gravel, and Nebraska, this is CT, means the unsourced control aggregate. And then we also have highway as well. So what you see over here, the first part is the angularity and texture. So what you see over here is with the angularity, the two natural aggregates are kind of a little bit lower compared to the recycled aggregate. So that's kind of expected because the crushing process recycled aggregate end up with high angularity. Same thing with texture. Actually, texture, the limestone from Nebraska is kind of low, but if you look at the others, are kind of higher than that. Other things you want to know is related to size. Uh, there are these different colors are different size, just so you know from one inch all the way to number four. And in order to get a clear idea of the aggie, we kind of separate the aggie into different sizes and look at the property. So the texture is different, but related to size, you really don't see that much difference. Meaning you don't really see that larger size tend to have high angularity or high uh, texture. So, and then the other component is flat and elongated particle. That's a particle you kind of can not want to have in your concrete. Again, it's everywhere. You cannot really say that natural aggregate has high or low, lower amounts. It really depends what type of aggregate you're using. Now getting into something more, uh, more exciting is how about void content? Void content is a direct indication of how much cement paste you need if you want to use that in concrete. Because at the end, we want to use this into concrete. So what you see over here with the, with the different angularity, with increase of angularity, you actually tend to see high void content. So that's a very good indication of, like if you have high angularity, you're gonna end up need to use more cement in your mixture. So specific gravity absorption is kind of expected with high specific gra gravity, you have low absorption. That's basically, regardless what kind of aggregate you have, that's a fairly good train. And then getting into something kind of more exciting is about resume water content. Resume water content, as I mentioned, when we're looking to recycle aggregate, that's probably the number one things people want to know. It's not directly a property, directly impact your concrete mixture design, but actually impact a lot of other things. So what you're seeing over here, uh, one thing you might notice, the two Nebraska recycled aggregate has very high mm -hmm. residual water content. Just so if you're from Nebraska, you might know that the, our mixture design is quite different. We tend to have more sand and gravel in our mix. That's why you end up with much higher residual water content. But most others actually have lower than that. So, but the thing you I, I want to point it out is when you use residual motor content to relate to other property that we care relate directly to the mixture design. Specific gravity, you have a direct relationship to aggregate crushing value, or you have two factors. Actually, you even have stronger correlation, meaning that you can definitely use this to guide your design, and then. Aggregate crushing value also is a very good indication of your, your aggregate that you'll be using for, for your concrete. And again, I want to show, show over here is that they have good relationship with other property as well. So the, the most unique thing is the freezing soil. So at the beginning, when we look at freezing soil resistance, the two natural aggregate have like this free soil mass loss, the lower the better. Natural aggregate, you have almost zero, which is supposed to be. But then when you get into recycled aggregate, they're higher. But the trend is not very clear. Then we keep thinking about this. Well, the freezing soil of recycled aggregate is not really depend on 
the total recycled aggregate is actually more of the recycled water content. So if you start to say take take the percentage of receive water content inside, you actually get more and more clear idea. Eventually, then you even consider crushing value. That's a mechanical property with no or low air entrainment recycle aggregate. You have very, very low freezing soil resistance. That's the aggregate from Texas because they don't add air entrainment to start with. Uh, moderate, that's the aggregate from North Carolina. They actually have moderate free soil resistance, then you have high free soil resistance with high air content. So this is actually give you a good indication. This test is actually a good one to tell free soil resistance of your recycled aggregate. So, so few conclusions, the test methods we use for residual motor content, aggregate crushing value is actually an effective test for recycled aggregate. Specific gravity absorption, they are good tools for you to find out the Indirect, indirectly indicated property. So, uh, receive motor content, ACE aggregate crushing very relatively good correlationship, which is expand that crushing process. Uh, freezing sun resistance, definitely something useful if you are not in state. So, I, I know that I ran through this really quick. So, the ACI report is actually published. If you go to ACI CRC, in final project report over there, provide all the details. There's also publication over there. I only present like one third of a study over here. There's another part related to the concrete mixture design using our recycled aggregate. The other piece is that part that Tara will present, which is on the chemistry analyze. With that, uh, just want to wrap it up. I want to cite what Frank just said. There's nothing to be scared of recycled aggregate. Uh, the skill is mostly we don't know enough, but there are tasks we can use, better understand. If they are, for example, if they're lower strengths, if you have freezing sawing concern, well, we adjust the design to accommodate that. So with that, I'll leave this to Mohammed to see if you have time for questions. Well, thank you. Good night.